You're listening to the Three Feet Radio Show with Ben Carbonaro and Luke Herbert. From our studios come special guests and netball commentary, exclusively on YouTube. Welcome, listeners, to another edition of the Three Feet Radio Show. And joining me in the studio this afternoon is my co-host, Luke. G'day, Luke. G'day, Ben. How are you doing? And get us started. I'm very well. Joining us today in the studio is Central Pulse Midcorder in Millie Lees. Hi, Millie. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. Good, excellent. Always good to talk talk to some Kiwis, being an Australian myself and Luke being a Kiwi. Good to have a bit of perspective there. <laughs> Just to get things cracking here, could you tell us a bit about your work as a doctor away from the netball court? Yeah, sure. I am. Um, I'm currently working in Wellington Hospital. Um, I graduated from medical school a couple of years ago, so I have been working in Wellington, um, in Wellington Hospital and, and Lower Hutt Hospital. I um, do different rotations as a junior doctor. We do lots of different um, rotations and different specialties. So. I've just finished working in ED in the emergency department and I'm um, about to take a bit of time off, hopefully to play um, a bit more netball and, um, and, and make myself available for the silver and selection. And just briefly going into when you rotate through the specialties, does that mean like you spend a certain amount of period as a surgeon and then a certain amount of period, say, in the emergency department? Yeah, yeah. So we do about we do three months initially in, in different specialties and you can choose what area interests you the most and so you can do um, a run in a surgical department or an emergency or in a general med- medical ward um, and you, you kind of rotate through them as part of your training as a doctor. There's been quite a f- there's been quite a few silver ferns. I think um, Bernice Manny or Sandra Edge might have been uh, might have been a doctor. Um, um, Leslie Nick- Leslie Rumble was a doctor. Yeah. Okay. Um, have you had have you had a chance to talk to her about being able to combine being a doctor with netball at all? Yeah, she actually came away with the silver ferns last year um, as our team doctor. Yep. She she had been playing um, while she was working as a doctor and training to become a doctor. She was playing netball, and so I got to meet her when we were um, away with the netball team, and I was able to chat about how she managed to juggle both, and um, and it, it was quite inspiring to have someone who's been able to do both to um to me you know to show me that it could be done. So it was awesome to meet her. And would you have any tips for people that are juggling a very intensive degree like medicine with, say, playing sport, which elite level sport is very time intensive also? Yeah, I think I've been really fortunate because my coaches have been really understanding and um, I've always made it quite clear that my um, medical studies were quite important to me and I wanted to be able to to do to get those out of the way as well as um, build you know my um, my netball skills so there were times where I had to take time away from netball to focus on study and there were times that I had to miss uh, you know some classes and things at university to to play games and things so I've always been lucky because the people around me um, have been really supportive so tips for for others wanting to do it would be um, to just communicate with the people people around you to see what kind of supports are in place and um, to see if it is manageable because it is quite tricky just to try and fit everything in and make sure you're not missing out on too much. Yeah, Millie, has being a, has being a doctor at all come in handy as a netball? I know for a fact that Caitlin Strong with the Vixens is a podiatrist over here in Australia and she sometimes looks after her teammates' feet. Have you been like helping um, sometimes with your teammates if they're sick or something like that ever? <laughs> no, we've actually got a great medical team already with the Pulse and sometimes it's nice to kind of remove yourself from that when they're your friends and um, and I can kind of focus on netball and, 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 my, and I'm confident and you know you feel supported by the rest of the medical team so I haven't actually had to do um, too much medical things with the, with the girls in the team. <laughs> Alright and just switching to a little less serious topic, um, when and how did you start playing netball? Uh, I started playing when I was eight years old and I played with my um, two sisters and my mum was actually our coach. Uh, at primary school, netball was the only sport you could play at my little school. Um, I lived in the country, and so we had just enough girls to make up a netball team, and mum was the coach. So um, I started really young and loved it, and um, always looked up to the silver ferns, and you know want, wanted to be a, become a silver fern from a very young age. So um, that's how I started with my, my family, and then just kind of kept it going and worked my way up the ranks. 
You talk about netball skills and that sort of thing, Millie. Is there anything that you've taken from, um, say, fast net and used it in your game when you're playing regular netball? Well, um, the thing with fast net and being a mid-quarter is that um, you don't get to do a whole lot. Um, you, you don't, don't do anything really that different to, to normal netball because you can't really shoot two pointers and you end up just running up and down the court at a million miles an hour. So I suppose fitness and speed is one thing that you take from fast net as a mid-quarter. All right. And h- how did you find Fastnet the atmosphere it it appears to to the viewer that it's very much a you know it's a sort of entertainment if you like absolutely I think um having just you know the two point shot in really quick quarters mean that it's fast paced it's exciting teams can can build a lead quickly and then can also come back quickly so I think um, in, for entertainment value it's brilliant and it's um, a bit like rugby sevens isn't it where um, people go to have a good time and watch a bit of sport and uh, um, the atmosphere is brilliant. Millie, um, what's, it like, what's it like for the Pulse this year to be on the verge of making the top four and playing finals after underachieving for the first couple of seasons in the ANZ Championship? Well, it's really exciting. I think every year we've made um, small little improvements and working our way up the ladder. And so this year it's just um, it's a really exciting feeling to go to Australia knowing that we have every chance of getting into the top four if we can win our last two games. But it's just giving us huge motivation to go and really try and get our first win over in Australia. Um, and it just means that, you know, the team's happy and everything is going great when you're winning. So uh, it's a good feeling in the team at the moment. Uh, would you identify any one thing in particular that changed between the first, say, couple of seasons where the Pulse struggled and when you've become, you know, well, sorry, when you've become a, you know, a very good team or a decent yeah. competitive team, if I can put it that way? I think in those first few years, um, you know, we we were quite a new team and um, a lot of us, it was our first season playing in the ANZ Champs. I mean, it was my first season um, to get, you know, to be up against that level of netball and I think it took us a while to um, to get to the standard we needed to get to and to build the combinations and get some more experience under our belt. And I think as each season we've pulled in more experienced players and we've, um, we're building quite a good unit within the team and I think over time that's just um, lifted the standard that we're, standard of netball that we're playing and I think that's probably why we're, we're slowly making improvements each, each year. You said building a good unit and making improvements each year. What's Oren, what's Oren Van Dyke up? Orin Van Dyke done for the team this year. What's she brought to the team as a group, but also as a player on the court? Well, um, as a player on the court, she is just the most, um, you know, friendliest and team orientated person, and she really brings us all together. And just as an experienced netball player, she's, you know, accurate in shooting. She's got great experience around court work, and her and Donna's combination in the circle has just been, um, I think, building and building each game. And uh, I just think it's just having, you know, it's such a strong um, player as a goal shoot is such a an, an crucial position on the court and I think she's just bringing a huge amount of experience and skill to our team. How have you enjoyed uh, beating Irene and Donna in the shooting circle this season? Uh, to be honest, it was quite difficult at the start. I think um, everyone was trying to get some links and combinations with each other and um, we all hoped that things would come easy and they probably didn't to start with. But I feel now we've got a great combination and I feel we're really connected on the court and our links are, are coming um, becoming really easy and uh, it's really exciting to play with them now. I can just see spaces and let the ball go and um, they're just such strong holders of, of their position so I think um, it's, it's been really good in the last few games Just on a light hard one here when you're on tour in other parts of New Zealand with the Pulse or you come over here to Australia um, is Katrina Grant um, the team captain, the resident um, Pulse comedian? <laughs> Absolutely. Polly loves to um to joke around and she keeps her own spirits up, so um yeah, she is. <laughs> All right then, and just sort of switching gears here, although staying with netball, can you describe us the experience of playing netball in an exotic location like the Cook Islands where you were part of the two thousand and nine World Youth Cup? 
Yeah, that was um, one of my most favourite tours that I've been on. Um, we were a really great group of friends that were in the team and we had been building towards the Under-21 World Cup for a few months and um, going over to the Cook Islands was uh, just an awesome place to play netball. I mean, it was um, sunny every day. We had to have compulsory sunbathing time. <laughs> you know, you had to, um, we went out to the markets and you could cruise around the island. It was just, um, you know, aside from the netball, it was just an awesome place to visit. And then, um I mean, to be playing it with some of your best friends, it was just one of the, the best tours I've been on. Um, unfortunately, we got absolutely thrashed by Australia in the final, but I think we all had a quite a good time. What's interesting, though, in that tournament is the fact that Courtney Tyree played for Australia's, Australia's team, but now she's one, she's one of you guys. Yeah, and I remember playing against her and thinking she was just the fittest player I'd ever played up against. You know, um, we all thought that she was like some triathlete or some marathon runner because she was like this skinny little thing that would just run up and down the court um, all day long. And, um, you know, she was a real threat in the centre. And um, it's amazing now, you know, knowing her quite well and thinking back to that time where, you know, she was the opposition and you, you had to play up against her. Quite funny. All right then, Millie, thanks very much for the chat. You provided a good insight into the Pulse camp and it would be nice um, for an Aussie like me to see um, the Pulse play in the finals. So it um, was great to talk to you. Thank you very much for having me. It was lovely to meet you both. You've been listening to the Three Feet Radio Show with Ben Carbonaro and Luke Herbert. Tune in next time for more special guests and netball commentary exclusively on YouTube.